What's up guys? Deep Cut here with Cartoon Universe. Today we are going to be talking about the Steven Universe movie and how its story seems to contradict everything we know about the Crystal Gems, with Garnet in particular. However, before we jump into all that, I just want to let you guys know that we here at Cartoon Universe are hiring for new hosts on the show. So if you've ever wanted to get paid to make videos about your favorite cartoons, just make sure you watch to the end to figure out how you can apply. Now, let's jump into it. So I enjoyed the movie overall, I had my issues with it, but at the end of the day, I consider it a welcome addition to the franchise. One of those issues, though, was how they handled the recap of all of our characters and their arcs once their memories were erased using the Rejuvenator. I felt like the movie didn't give the characters adequate enough time to really re-experience their arcs from the TV series because of the music. And while the music was great, it didn't really appropriately tell the story to the audience, and in many ways, they showed us the opposite of what we actually got in the show. For instance, Amethyst. When rejuvenated, we learned that she was essentially born without a personality, and had to learn everything from copying others. This is in contrast to the show, where she shows virtually none of the personality traits of the gems around her, such as Pearl or Garnet, being more on the lazy, fun, and loose side of things, and then having it confirmed that these are traits that Amethyst all seem to have when we finally meet them all at the human zoo. If this wasn't part of her natural coding, then who did she learn this from? And then there was Pearl, whose journey can have multiple interpretations, but all of them seem to be contradicted in one way or another by this movie. For instance, you could see her as the one who really started rebelling first. She was the one who had to convince Pink Diamond to break the rules, yet in the movie, she's presented as someone who can only follow the rules and struggles to break away until the person she adores convinces her to. Then there is the worst of it, Garnet. While the characters of the series always seem to think of Garnet as an expression of true and pure love, the actual execution of their relationship was a toxic codependency. Even White Diamond refers to them in this way, when talking about all of the gem's personal flaws that never quite got fixed during the show. A moment that was meant to highlight that we don't need to fix all of our flaws, that our flaws are part of what make us who we are. There were hints of this throughout the entire series. In the first episode that we meet Ruby and Sapphire, we can already see the signs of how toxic their relationship is. While separated, Ruby and Sapphire seem to lose sight of everything else and only care about getting back together. Ruby straight up abandons Steven on a homeworld ship, because finding Sapphire was more important to her. During the Sardonyx arc, we see a more light-hearted story between the two, but it has the same point to it, that Ruby and Sapphire will let Steven suffer when they aren't together. In Hit the Diamond, there is a very real threat of the Rubies looking for Jasper, and they're willing to use violence to get the answer. Even Sapphire knows that fighting them is a bad approach to this, but she and Ruby are constantly risking everyone else's safety by being unable to be apart from each other for a day. After learning that Rose Quartz was really Pink a Diamond all along, the two split up for a while, and they come to realize that their relationship isn't what Rose Quartz claimed it to be. It wasn't just this vague concept of true love that had been explained away like it was magic. They weren't destined to be together, but instead had to make not just the choice, but the actual effort to get back together and make things work. They had to make a commitment with their marriage, not a commitment to be together, but to work together. It was a beautiful sentiment, and one that is true to how our world really works. You may find someone that, the moment you touch them, everything feels right. It may feel like you need that person, that you are practically one person when you are together. In many ways, that can be a beautiful thing, but it can also be very dangerous, and acting like it is out of your control, that you are just a slave to this romantic idea of destiny and love, only makes it more so. It was an amazing note to end their story on, that Garnet was a codependent and somewhat toxic relationship, but that Ruby and Sapphire were working together to make it a healthy one, a real relationship, not just this vague, poetic interpretation that Rose Quartz gave them. And then the movie ruined that. When Ruby and Sapphire first fuse again, we see what is going on inside of their mind, or inside of their soul. It's hard to say exactly how literal this scene is, and while it is very beautiful, there are very few ways to interpret it without contradicting what we saw in the show. In the scene, we see two versions of Garnet. 
one red and one blue, and each meaning to represent either ruby or sapphire. There are several other small distinctions between them, like their outfits, and they move practically in sync with one another before finally fusing to become the first version of Garnet that we saw from The Answer. The point of the scene seemed pretty clear, that Ruby and Sapphire were always Garnet individually, on the inside, and that they were just waiting for the other piece of themselves to complete each other. The whole point of the show was to give us these fairy tales from Stephen's childhood. Ones about superheroes, or a perfect mother, and true love. But as Stephen grows up, he realizes that fairy tales aren't real, that the truth to all of these relationships and stories were a lot more complex and flawed than he could previously understand. And the movie seemed to erase that. Now that's all I have for you guys today, but before I go, here's a quick announcement from Haley about how to apply to work with us here at Cartoon Universe. Hey everyone, this is Haley popping in for a minute. If you're still watching this video, I would like to let you know that once again, we are looking for new hosts for the channel. There's just so much coming out in the next few months, and we really don't have time to cover it all. If you want to make money creating videos about cartoons, now is your chance. If you already have a YouTube channel, don't worry, you can still join. In fact, as long as you air your videos on Cartoon Universe first, you can still upload them to your official channel later. Anyways, here are the rules. So for your age, I would like you to at least be turning 18 in 3 months or less, or be older than 18, since once you turn 18 you can have a PayPal, which is what I would like to pay you through. And US residents are ideal, but not a strict requirement. As for how many videos I'd like you to make, one video every 2 weeks to start off would be great so I can give you feedback in time, and then ideally one video a week is the ultimate goal, or more if you are inspired. As for your equipment, I do expect you to have a decent quality microphone. I currently use a Blue Yeti, which is great, and also know some sort of editing software. I use Adobe Premiere Pro. I know there's other software that are probably cheaper than this, but that's just what I use. As for communication, Discord is a must. If you don't already have the app, please make sure to download it and get notifications on it so you can better respond to me and be able to respond to messages within a day unless you tell me you're going to be away for some time. Of course, there are going to be a few perks here, and to start off, 50% of your video's revenue is what you will get, and of course, over time, this can grow as you do great videos. If you live in Southern California, there are a lot of animation events that we could go to together, and you can record video and stuff, or there's stuff that I can't make, you can go to. And if you live anywhere else, there's also many plans that we would like to cover, but we simply can't since we're far away. So if you're close to one of those cons, we can get you press access, and you can even maybe interview people or just kind of record what happens at each of the panels. As for commitment, I do expect at least a four month commitment. This is not an easy task, I know for some, so please know what you're getting yourself into. And finally, um, one of the most important things is the shows that we cover. I expect you to know about at least two of these shows in depth and just knowing about other ones or being willing to watch other ones is definitely a positive. So here are the cartoons that we cover. Of course there's Steven Ewers, but I should note that you probably won't be able to make too many Steven Ewers videos since Steve Cut and I had those pretty much covered, but if there's something you really want to make or if it's something that you have a great idea for that we would not have thought of, you can definitely make a video on Steven Ewers. The Dragon Prince, Ruby, Tangled the Series, Infinity Train, Villainous, Reckless Ladybug, Young Justice, Rick and Morty, Final Space, Hasman Hotel, Carmen San Diego, Castlevania, Star Wars The Clone Wars, Adventure Time, Amphibia, Avatar The Last Airbender, and The Legend of Korra, and some upcoming shows that we might possibly cover are Owl House and Glitch Text. Or if you want to specialize in reviewing new shows slash making video essays on various cartoons, let me know. I may miss some, but that's more or less the list. And so finally, to apply. Show me something that you have made that requires a voiceover. I can teach you how to edit, but sounding good while being recorded is the most important part. It can be something you made just for this application as well. Bonus points if you make a mini theory video or something that would be directly for the channel. You can also link me to any scripts you have made. Email cartooniverses at gmail.com with a link to your video sample and what shows you have watched. Also a little bit about yourself would be great so I can get to know you. If you have applied before, you can try again if you got gotten better at making videos. There's no real time limit here, but the sooner we can get started, the better. Thank you! For those of you who want to be involved, but can't become a video host for one reason or another, there are other ways to support the channel, such as our Patreon page, where we have a lot of perks for very small donations each month. I'll put a link to that in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.